Hello, curious people. Although Queen Elizabeth II will celebrate her 94th birthday on April 21st, she's still very active in her position. And so, on Sunday, March 5th, the monarch delivered a message to the nation. This is an unusual situation because apart from traditional annual Christmas messages, this is the only fifth speech about current events in the history of the Queen's reign. How is the health of the mother of Prince Charles? Well, to find out and much more, stay with us till the very end. But before that, of course, don't forget to leave a like and turn on the notifications. You probably already know that a lot of interesting information can also be found on our Instagram. Elizabeth II has been ruling for 68 years, to be exact, since February 6th of 1952. During such a long time, she survived the war, several prime ministers, and significant civilization changes. She has also witnessed many scandals, and yet she stands firm on her position. And what's more, a long time ago, the Queen has sworn that she will never abdicate. So her 71-year-old son Charles is the prince who has waited for the throne for the longest. And although the monarch is aware of this, she sees Prince William as her successor, so she gives more and more responsibilities to him and his wife, the Duchess Catherine. And yet it seems that the latest months are the greatest challenge for Elizabeth II, and she had to face situations that could not have been expected at all, or which she could not have prepared for. Just to remind you what issues the monarch has had in the last few months, uh, the scandal with Prince Andrew and his departure from service to the country, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle stepping down from the position of senior royal family members, and their departure from the country, and now the coronavirus pandemic, after all, even her own son, Prince Charles, tested positive. This is why on Sunday, March 5th, Queen Elizabeth II gave a speech related to this epidemic to the nation. At the time of the speech, in Great Britain, the number of coronavirus cases was around 48,000, and almost 5,000 people have died. That's why the monarch began her speech with the words, I am speaking to you at what I know is an increasingly challenging time, at a time of disruption in the life of our country, a disruption that has brought grief to some, financial difficulties to many, and enormous changes to the daily lives of us all. The Queen thanked the National Health Service workers, social workers, and all those who carry out essential roles and selflessly continue their day-to-day -day duties outside of their home in support of us all. Elizabeth also said thanks to all those by staying at home, help protecting the most vulnerable, and spare the suffering of many families who lost their loved ones. The Queen has assured her citizens, together we are tackling this disease, and I want to reassure you that if we remain united and resolute, then we will overcome it. Then, she added, I hope in the years to come everyone will be able to take pride in how they responded to this challenge. And those who come after us will say the Britons of this generation were as strong as any. That the attributes of self-discipline, of quiet good-humored resolve, and fellow feelings still characterize this country. The pride in who we are is not part of our past, it defines our present and our future. In her speech, Elizabeth II also believes that the moments when the inhabitants of the country came out in in front of the houses or on balconies to applaud the healthcare staff and other key workers will be remembered as an expression of great spirit of the nation. Then she admitted, and though self-isolating may at times be hard, many people of all faiths and of none are discovering that it presents an opportunity to slow down, pause, and reflect in prayer or meditation. At the end of her speech, the monarch also recalled her first radio address in 1940, when she, along with her younger sister, Princess Margaret, gave a message of encouragement to children during the German bombings. We as children spoke from here at Windsor to our children who had been evacuated from their homes and sent away from their own safety. Today, once again, many will feel a painful sense of separation from their loved ones. But now, as then, we know deep down that it's the right thing to do. While we have faced challenges before, this one is different. The Queen ended her speech with a message of hope. We will succeed, and that success will belong to every one of us. We should take comfort that while we may have more still to endure, better days will return. We will be with our friends again. We will be with our families again. And we will meet again. As I said in the introduction, Elizabeth II rarely addresses the nation, except for her annual Christmas speeches. The Sunday speech was only the fifth such message during the Queen's reign. Previously, it happened when the monarch gave a speech in 2012 on the 60th anniversary of her coronation. She also spoke in 2002 after the death of the Queen Mother Elizabeth, and in 1997 after the death of Princess Diana, and in 1991 during the First Gulf War. 
Do you know how she prepared for this address? According to the British media, this speech was recorded at Windsor Castle, where the Queen has been staying with her husband, Prince Philip, for three weeks now. The royal couple doesn't have contact with other family members and is accompanied by eight closest associates. This is obviously due to Elizabeth II and Prince Philip's age. The Queen also followed the government's instructions and ordered anyone who could to work from home. So the message was recorded with the strictest safety measures. The monarch was alone in the room with the cameraman, who wore a protective suit and stood three meters from the queen, while the rest of the technical crew was in a different room. Such precautionary measures are no joke. After all, as you can remember from our other videos, Prince Charles was infected with the coronavirus. As we read in the Clarence House statement, the prince showed mild symptoms, remained in good health, and worked from home all the time. William and Harry's father spent seven days in isolation at the Burke Hall Country House, which is a part of the Balmoral Royal Estate in Scotland. What's more, the prince's wife, Duchess Camilla, also tested for coronavirus and the result was negative, meaning no infection. Despite this, the woman stayed in isolation, just in case. The son of Elizabeth II got infected with the virus due to a big number of tasks that he carried out as his public activities in the last weeks before his quarantine. He most likely got infected during a meeting with the Prince of Monaco, Albert II, who also tested positive. Today, the heir to the throne is healthy and he announced it in a video published on social media at the beginning of this month. The prince said that although he already recovered, he still maintains the recommended social distance. He said, as we are all learning, this is a strange, frustrating and often distressing experience when the presence of family and friends is no longer possible and the normal structures of life are suddenly removed. At such an unprecedented and anxious time in our lives, my wife and I are thinking particularly of all those who have lost their loved ones in such difficult and abnormal circumstances, and of those having to endure sickness, isolation, and loneliness. The Prince of Wales then thanked numerous volunteers and retail workers, but above all, he paid tribute to all doctors, nurses, and all other NHS professionals, whose extraordinary skills and utter selfless devotion to duty and the care of their patients in a situation of increased risk is a sort of pride for the entire nation. He added, as a nation, we are faced by a profoundly challenging situation, which we are only too aware threatens the livelihoods, businesses, and welfare of millions of our fellow citizens. None of us can say when this will end, but end it will. Until it does, let us all try and live with hope and with faith in ourselves and each other. Look forward to better times to come. Well, I guess we could also relate to those words, right? Meanwhile, although the Queen's son is doing well, there have been sad news about the Prime Minister Boris Johnson. Also, on Sunday, the politician was admitted to the hospital. But let's go step by step. Boris Johnson had a positive coronavirus test on March 27th. Since then, he was in isolation in his apartment on Downing Street. He assured that the symptoms were mild and that he would remotely direct the work of the government. And he worked from home all the time. But on Friday, April the 3rd, the Prime Minister confirmed that he was still in quarantine because he still had a high temperature. It seems that the symptoms of the disease hadn't disappeared and maybe even got worse because as reported by the politician's office on Sunday, he was admitted to the hospital. As we read in the statement released by the spokeswoman of the Prime Minister, the politician as advised by his doctor was admitted to the hospital for a checkup. This is a preventative measure because the Prime Minister is still having persistent coronavirus symptoms 10 days after a positive test result. By the way, Boris Johnson thanked public health staff for unbelievably hard work and called the nation to continue to follow the government's recommendations to stay home, protect the NHS, and save lives. Robert Jenrick, the Secretary of State for Housing, Communities, and Local Government, spoke about Johnson's visit in the hospital on Monday morning. The politician informed that they're still waiting for some tests and the Prime Minister will stay in the hospital as long as it's needed. In the evening that same day, the media reported that Johnson had been transferred to the intensive care unit because he got worse. His duties were taken over by head of diplomacy Dominic Rabb. Let's go back for a moment to the Queen's speech. Before Sunday, many people wondered whether the monarch would announce her abdication because of the situation. Of course this didn't happen because the Queen still wants to fulfill the promise she made many years ago. She said that as long as she had enough strength, she would hold her position. Therefore, Elizabeth II, who in addition to being the Queen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, is also the head of 15 other countries as well as the head of the Anglican Church. So she has to encourage her people. And because she rarely gives messages to the nation, 
This one only showed how serious the situation is. And as it turned out, people actually expected it. According to the foreign press, the monarch's speech was watched live by nearly 24 million British people. And this means that it was the second most viewed television program this year. This number includes only audiences in front of the TV and doesn't include views from websites or phone apps. Just to compare, the last Christmas speech was watched by almost 8 million viewers. This year, two weeks ago to be exact, people could also watch a speech from the Prime Minister Boris Johnson in which he introduced the restrictions in order to stop the epidemic. And what do you think, my curious sippers? Do you think the Queen's speech had an impact on her people? Do you agree with the words of the monarch and think that we can also apply them to us? Let us know in the comments. Remember to leave a like under this video and share it with your friends. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. And check out our Instagram too. Until next time!